Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Razer Blade 14. And Razer are making some pretty big claims about this guy, including the world's most powerful 14 inch gaming laptop, the smallest 14 inch gaming laptop, most efficient 14 inch and longest battery on a Razer. Which all sounds very impressive, although to be fair, there is really only a handful of 14 inch gaming laptops. The closest competitor to this would be Asus's Zephyrus G14, uh, which is a great laptop, although that does top out with a 3060. This, however, can be specced with a 3060, 70 or 80, along with Ryzen 9 5900HX, which really is just as big of a deal as the new graphics, as this marks the first time we're getting an AMD CPU in a Razer Blade laptop. And then throw in a 144Hz Full HD screen, or like I have here, a 165Hz Quad HD resolution screen, up to a terabyte of PCIe storage, 16 gigs of RAM, although that's not upgradable unfortunately, and that's all in a chassis that weighs just 1.78 kilograms and is 16.8 mil thick. So altogether, this is a real killer combination, and if we're going to go for an annoying cliche, a pint-sized powerhouse. But hold your horses, before you throw your current laptop in the bin out of disgust because you don't have one of these, just a couple of things. And the first one is that all three graphics card options are 100 watt TGP models, which is great for the 3060, pretty reasonable for the 3070, but it's definitely on the lower power end for the 3080, which tend to range between 85 watts and 165 watts. I would probably recommend the 3060 or the 70 model of this. So that's worth considering, but at the same time, the Blade 14 is very expensive, starting at about $1,800 with a 3060 and up to $2,800 for a 3080 spec. Also, the battery life is okay, nothing special, but I'll come back to this. And while the whole thing is impressively compact given the performance, it is another copy and paste Razer design. Black aluminium chassis, RGB keyboard, the build quality is top notch, but there's still this big chin and protruding plastic bezels. It's still 16 by nine. We get the slightly awkward charger. There's no Thunderbolt support, and it can be a bit of a greasy fingerprint magnet. I actually wiped this clean before I started the video, but clearly my disgustingly mucky, greasy fingerprints have already made a bit of a mess on the lid there. It is a bit annoying just how greasy this thing gets. I must admit, I am also a little bit on the fence about having a Quad HD resolution screen on a 14 inch laptop. It makes perfect sense for 15 inch and bigger sizes, but on here, while it's incredibly sharp, and also I love this matte panel, it looks great. In fact, my only criticism really will be the fact that it tops out at about 320 nits or so. So it's not the brightest, and I often find myself uh, maxing it out just to make it more comfortable to use. However, a benefit of this high spec panel is it's more color accurate. They're both about 100% sRGB, but the Quad HD hits 98% of the DCI-P3 gamut with a 10 millisecond response time versus 20 milliseconds on the Full HD. But of course, the compromise with that high resolution is the impact on your frame rate and also battery life. So these are my average frame rates with maxed out settings at 1080p, and then the same again at native 1440. And as you can see, the FPS takes about a 10 to 20% hit. And most games just aren't coming close to maxing out that 165Hz refresh. Although of course it all depends on the games you're playing and at what settings. I am really pleased though that Razer is finally making this switch or jump even to these AMD Ryzen 5000 CPUs because it was a bit frustrating at the beginning of the year when they uh, refreshed some of their Blade laptops that they still came with 10th gen Intel CPUs. So I feel a bit bad for those of you who may have actually bought a Razer laptop a few months ago because now we've got laptops like this with AMD Ryzen 5000 and it's significantly more powerful and more efficient. However, all this extra power does come at a bit of a price. Heat. This thing gets pretty toasty even with the new vapor chamber cooling we've got inside. And with the dual fans whirring away, which to be fair weren't obnoxiously loud, topping out at about 59 decibels, I did still see the CPU peak at about 92 degrees Celsius. The good news though is the keyboard and the touchpad didn't get too hot, so it was never really uncomfortable to use playing on a desk, but your legs will get a bit sweaty if you're, well, laptop gaming. Inside, we get a 61.6 watt hour battery, along with this 230 watt charging brick, and you'll get about six hours or so of non-gaming use. 
not too bad, but you can probably get an extra hour or two if you opt for the full HD and maybe a lower power model. Now, just a quick mention of I.O. and we get a pretty healthy range of ports actually. There's uh, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C's uh, and they support power delivery and also DisplayPort 1.4. We also get two Type A 3.2 Gen 2. It's all a bit complicated. Uh, interestingly, we do get a brand spanking new HDMI 2.1 port, which is great to see. Uh, so you can actually hook up up to a 4K 120 FPS external display if you want to go nuts. If we take a look inside, you can see that only the single M2 SSD can be swapped out. The RAM is soldered on, so that can't be upgraded, which is a bit of a shame as the spec tops out with 16 gigs, which is fine. I think maybe a 32 option would have been nice to go along with maybe the higher spec 3080. However, the less said about this webcam, the better the quality is pretty atrocious actually, which is a real shame given how important webcams have become in the last year or so. So that is something I definitely want to see uh, improved in the next version of this. I mean, just look how noisy that is. Ugh, it's terrible. Okay, so let's wrap up and raise this marketing material to one side. I think this is genuinely the most powerful, the most compact, and arguably the best looking 14 inch gaming laptop you can buy. Definitely give my good friend Matt Moniz his video a watch where he compares the G14 and the Blade 14 and I'll drop a link below because that is a great alternative to this and about $300 cheaper. So good job Razer, now just give me this with a 16x10 screen, uh, maybe a slightly more fingerprint resistant coating or just a bit of a design refresh would be nice and also a much better webcam because this thing is terrible. But despite that, if you can afford it, this is a pretty easy recommendation and I will leave links below if you want to check it out. And if you want to see more from me, if you enjoyed the video, a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.